see all the work? All the work I did trying to cut, hollow that out with this tool and with the chainsaw it was just 30 seconds. bonsai carving kit versus the chainsaw. Uh, the first part, you saw me go over a Fordham carving kit and then I ended ended it with carving this bougainvillea with a chainsaw. Uh, what you didn't see, I provided a little bit of contour uh, using my angle grinder. And um, I'll explain that as I get into the carving, what that actually does. All the bits that I actually use, and we'll see what we can use from the Fordham. And um, sounds like my game is over. I'm going to start or continue with the samurai bit. This was in my long shaft, a die grinder. This was a Harbor Freight Special. This is probably older than most people's bonsai careers. And what I'm going to do is refine the chainsaw carving a little bit. You see there's flat planes and straight cuts. So this will be able to give us a little bit of more detail. It's not a finishing carving device at all. Okay, bit. So let's get to it. I'll stop here and show you the difference between living, and this is particular to a bougainvillea. The living, you get this orange and this yellow color, and then the dead is pretty much dry. in a while on this particular bit you need to check how tight this is when I started that was flush with the tool you're talking about where the silvery part meets the black part that is correct so I'm going to tighten this or actually I'm going to take it off and switch to this one which I think is called a ninja or whatever Grand Potter calls it but if you notice the, the space that was flush. So as it You can almost fit the wrench in between that now. Yeah. Let's see, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And I tighten this. See it was flush and it had lifted itself out that much. Eventually this put it back in again, I don't think I caught that. This is called an arbor. That's basically completely flush with mm -hmm. the finger. No air behind it at all. Whereas before, yeah, we can see a clear gap. <laughs> this is called an arbor. And I have to replace them. Originally, it came with a stainless steel one, and you see how that one's bent. So that one had worked its way out and uh, bent. So I switched to this is a hardened steel one. But even the hardened steel ones then if you allow them to work their way out so we're going to switch to the ninja 
It's a smaller head. So it sounds like it's the tool getting locked up inside the tree, but that's not. That's just you reducing your foot from the pedal so you can remove the tool safer from the tree. Exactly. And when the tree is Having my kit a variable speed foot pedal. Now this makes it so much easier when you're carving. You can vary the speed of the bit. Uh, like this ninja needs to have a slower RPM than what the regular die grinder provides. I can almost put my fist in it. So again, I would like to point out that you need to continually check how the bits are seated in the die grinder. Coming up. Yes, the bit was changed from the this one to this one. After a quick retighten, back to the carving. <laughs> Sorry, there's just something cool about sawdust and in slow motion. See all the work, all the work I did trying to cut, hollow that out with this tool and with the chainsaw, it was just 30 seconds. So what I'm doing now is contouring and giving taper to the stump. <laughs> Yeah, I'm awesome. Bless you. Uh, here I'm providing an escape for any water that might collect in this hollow. And we're on to our flex shaft carver. Mine's by Master Carver. And I'm going to my uh, my same carver. horsepower bits and shaft and everything as the Fordham kit. Yes. The Fordham pieces interchange with this and yeah, everything. all at pretty much all of the flex shaft carvers they designed them so that they're all interchangeable. Uh, this is almost identical to the uh, the chucked handle that they have that the Fordham H30 has. one I think that one is H30 um, this is the the roto saw the carbide burr available in any carving thing and you'll 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 see the difference between the chunks that the other one takes off and and how this is gonna smooth things out and get a little bit better line and design and these are uh, a lot safer than the other ones kind of takes off a little bit of skin. It's good, it's, 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 it's good for like bunions. Say for your and, wife's feet, that would yeah. be great. Don't give her any ideas. Maybe your wife's feet. No. <laughs> now sometimes you want to leave the detail that comes underneath the bark. Because there's no way you can reproduce that very easily. So that's, I can I can match this to this using a wire brush, but the way the the wood grain is like that, sometimes you just want to leave that. A lot better smell than the rotten wood smell. It is. down to the smaller bit and the other it's a smaller roto saw it's a little a little clogged at the moment but if you just soak it overnight in water it's wood it expands and comes right out hmm. <coughs> This 
of the finishing. I have not tried this particular one yet. We got it in Nature's Way from Jim Doyle. I think it's made in Germany. So we'll see. We'll see how it works. It seems a little uh, stiff. Yeah, a little stiff, a little aggressive. So we'll see what happens. If not, I'll switch over to my my usual. <laughs> One safety thing about using a wire brush is always wear glasses. It throws off the pieces of wire and they can stick right in your eyeball. And then you'll hate yourself for that day. All the fine grain textures on there now. Before it looked like the carving was there, but the texture of the wood was still not aged. That made it look older, weathered. Now the purpose of using fire is to burn off those little pithy fibers uh, to get rid of some tool marks. And does it also help the wood check? <clears throat> it does, it dries it out. And the checking is where it splits. There are those critics of carving that think that carving destroys the edge detail. They insist that only pair of gin pliers and slowly peeling the wood away that's the only valid bonsai technique when you're carving wood. But that works on junipers and it works on pines and different conifers. It doesn't really do too much for a tree like a Vogelvia. I mean, just by, by burning it and then brushing it, you'll get a more natural looking edge, more an edge that's weathered looking. I mean, do we want it to look like it broke, or do we want it to look like it's been weathered and eroded away? And I think that's really the question that we should be asking ourselves when we're carving. What's the purpose of our carving? Do we want it to make, make it look like it just happened, or do we want it to make it look like it happened a hundred years ago? So those who dismiss power carving out of hand, and anything you do out of hand, or knee jerk, or because that's the way you were taught, anything like that is always suspect. You should always question, well, why are they telling you this? Do they have something to sell? Do they have their own viewpoint to push? Or Because there are many different paths to where we're getting to, to say that doing it one way or another is wrong is just, I don't know, it's self-serving. So we're almost done with this. I'm not going to put lime sulfur on it. We're going to let uh, Mr. Ben here put lime sulfur on it because he enjoys doing that. I like the smell. It reminds me too much of my hospital days, sorry. <laughs> the lime sulfur can go right over the burnt part, uh, it just takes a couple more coats. And what's interesting is the, the charcoal will color the lime sulfur and it won't be as, as bright white, which some people don't like. And that's that, okay. Use a little bit of brush and we're done. And there we go. Uh, many thanks to Ben for being the cameraman. Uh, this is uh, what he did with the lime sulfur. I think it came out pretty good. I uh, just needs a little bit of wiring and a little time. And I think it'd be good. But we'll see you later. Make sure you like, share, all that kind of stuff that ever, all the YouTube people ask you to do. Um, that's it. See you later. Bye-bye.